You have to play in the style of the greatest player. Bob, <laughs> right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't do a Murphy on him, I don't know who will. Doing the game. Let's go. Well, I'll try. I know the Queen's the strongest piece on the board. That I know. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You can look that up. Half his talent, if I had half his talent, Magnus Carlson wouldn't be world champion. Hmm. You want the 
tonight, don't you? Good way to protect it. I like that. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> you were winning that game. You were winning. <laughs> nice game, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. No, you were winning, of course. Bob, I try again? No, you should take the pawn on h6 and yeah. try to push the eight yeah. pawn rather than looking for an attack. Yeah, we can play. I try again? Yeah, sure. Of hey guys, Brian here. And what a game by Morphe Bob. Holy smokes. I mean, I think. Out of all the players that have ever played Akaru, he had the biggest advantage, 8.5 against him. I think there was another one, Ari, he had 6.5 or something. But um, but Bob definitely had the biggest advantage. And for those who are wondering how the game would have ended, I mean, Bob did run out of time, but he both re they both realized, obviously, that either way the king moves here or here, you're going to get mated, queen, bishop, battery, and that queen was just sneaking there, uh, supported by the rook there, and, and Bob did not see it. But uh, wow, what a great game by by Bob and Hikaru. I mean, holy man, Hikaru just had a turtle up, man. He was being attacked from all sides, and man, Bob had the game, right? He had the game just like Hikaru pointed out. And I'm so glad that Hikaru does the post game analysis because it makes my job a heck of a lot easier. And I gotta say, time after time again, Hikaru, when he does the post game analysis after the game, he knows exactly where his opponent's biggest advantage was and what the move should have been and the plan. Like, every single time. It's amazing. The guy is pretty much stockfished like wired into his his, uh, his brain there so we'll definitely go over that winning line for Bob and um, some other lines that I think like w you know this line by Bob a very very nice um, line here uh, inviting Hikaru to take the side we'll go over all that and a lot more so but wow just kudos to Morphe Bob for a brilliant game Smith more again but against the goat and blitz and just one of the best in the world it's such a pleasure to watch nicely done Bob and if you guys want to watch the rematch of this game, it's going to be on Hikaru's channel, so definitely go there and sub and, and wait for it. Um, I'm sure it'll pop up soon. So just, wow, just another brilliant game. And again, nothing to take away from Bob here. Bob played an excellent game, outstanding game. And um, I think I just want people to know that Hikaru is one of the reasons why he's the best, not only chess player, but just a good, great human being is that um, he came back from playing a major tournament in Europe. He was jet lagged. And on the day he played Bob here, in the morning he was streaming for like hours. So he came in the afternoon and played for like three hours. And it's just crazy how well he can play and stay concentrated and focused despite all that. So let's go to this position. And in the game, well, actually, let's go move back here. So Bob plays knight d5. Carl declines to take the knight. Instead, sets castle. Let's go move back. Anything wrong with taking here? Can you guys calculate this? There's nothing wrong with taking, but just to make things easier, I think Karo just castled, and I think that's the way to go. Just from a human standpoint, when you have little time, just, you know, why why go into the shenanigans, right? But if you guys are curious what the line is, the dangerous part is that this, this e-file starts to get open, and, and Black has not castled yet. So let me just show you one continuation here. And um, d6, bishop takes. This could be one continuation. White will get the piece back, and now Black can castle. And, I mean, the computer has the game dead even here, but, uh, you know, if, if you know a good player is doing something like this, it should raise a red flag, and they've kind of obviously studied this line, has experience, so if you accept, you might be falling into one of their uh, one of their lines, so I think that's why maybe Hikaru decided to cast there, so just in case anyone wondering what that line looked like. Let's go to how uh, Bob could have finished the game off. Hikaru mentioned what the plan was. Let's go move back here. In the game, Rook D6 was played. Let's go move back. Do you um, will be another move for white. Yes, just like Akara said, take that pawn and whew, look at Black's position. It's not fun. It's really not fun. He's turtled up. Uh, what can he really do? 
His rooks are tied up. Can't really push this pawn. Bishop's going to come here. This bishop's being blocked in. This knight doesn't really have any good future squares to go to. Ooh, not a really good plan for, for black here. I mean, maybe something like queen, queen b8, double up, but... um. Of course, you can play queen g7, and you know what the plan is, exactly what Kara mentioned. You want to push this h-pawn to glory. And again, no, no good plans for for black here. Computer recommends d5, but you can start pushing that h-pawn and get this king to safety. Take advantage of the pin and bring the knight. Knight takes, pin, push, and eventually you'll queen, and when the dust is settled... Um, white will be winning at 8.8, .8, but generally that's that's the plan. Take the pawn and push the uh, push the h pawn in. Akar got that definitely right as usual, and I think this is one of those things where I mean, if Carl had that position, I'm sure he would have seen it because that's Carlini style, right? But Bob's style is to attack, and I think that's what Akar mentioned at the end. He was like, "Don't look for the attack, just push the h pawn." So it might be one of those things where your style kind of blinds you to the opportunities that are that are there, but. Of course, man, that's super hard when you're the one playing, especially against a player like Hikaru. It's the outsider sees everything, right? So, but it was a brilliant attack by Bob. I love how he set it all up with the uh, with Bishop takes knight here and bringing in the queen bishop battery and slowly infiltrating. That's that's kind of what set that up. And last but not least, here in this position in the game, Bob plays Bishop g6, trying to create some type of play. It's going to move back. Will be another move for White here. How can White stay in the game? Yes, maybe exchange sack here and grab this pawn, and the game is uh, pretty much dead even. A little bit better for white at 0. 0.5, but whew, that was it, man. Wow, Bob had it in its grasp, but very, very hard to see when you're the one playing. Sometimes you got to go for the simple stuff and um, instead of looking for the fancy attack, but it obviously is super hard when you're the one playing. Outsider sees everything. Great job by Morphe Bob. He is so good, and obviously Hikaru is definitely... The goat in Blitz, able to perform, you know, just lights out. Even though he went through all that stuff, like I mentioned, it's it's crazy. They really are built differently, man. The the elite in any field are just it's just crazy. It's crazy. All right, nicely done, boys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you like the game in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe at the notification. Thanks. We'll see you guys tomorrow.